Hi Beats, it's EKG. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Ebony and I am a 25 year old woman living in a city who is an avid reader and a budding rising poet and that brings me to what I will be doing this video and that is curating a list of book recommendations, specifically poetry collections that are geared towards beginners. So this will be a beginner friendly poetry book recommendation list. Poetry is seeing a spark in interest. Just overall a great great time to get into poetry right now. So I'm going to hit you with a few book recommendations and the way I'm going to do this is basically formulate the recommendations from the most easiest or most beginner friendly to maybe slightly more advanced but still worthy of being read especially if you are new to poetry so let's get into it and i also for one of the poetry collections that i'm going to mention i also will be inserting the poet themselves reading their work as well as giving them a brief background introduction to it so let's get right into it the first two poetry collections that i'm going to recommend as i was saying are people who i've actually found through social media and i think that their work deserves more hype in the world of modern or contemporary poetry specifically how to cure a ghost which is by freya rosen this poetry collection focuses on freya rosen's connection with her identity as well as past traumas. I've recommended this book before on my channel and I think that it uses the trends of modern poetry but the work and the content of the poems themselves are very substantial and beautiful and breathtaking and are a good representation for what poetry can be. Read you the blurb on the back. It says her debut poetry collection fearlessly illuminates her experiences as a young queer Muslim femme navigating the vibrant intimate joys and paralyzing obstacles of her intersectionality. And I will read you a poem from here and this is on page 74 and it's called bodily solicism. How much will it cost to repay the damage paid of bringing me here, sun toiled, unbloomed? A mere awakened seed in my ma's belly. Caressed by her wounds of flesh and pain, I choose her, I've been told, to save her. My ancestors marooned me into being her savior, her hope of survival, whispering, you'll be the one to pick and lift her up. But I failed. In my stomach, the dark wounds are cocooning me. I'm sorry I failed you, Ma. I just had to survive for myself. First, free woman told me to let go, forgive myself first. I mean, there's so much to um, unearth in this collection, so definitely check it out. Okay, so the next poetry collection that I would recommend to you is Black Girl Call Home by Jasmine Manns. This poetry collection is beyond accessible and one key aspect of being a newbie in poetry and finding collections that you feel can grasp your attention and you can relate to and understand is by having something in common with the themes that are being represented to in the collection and that is more than evident here, Jasmine Manns ruminates or muses on growing up as a black girl, specifically in the inner city. She details growing up in Newark, New Jersey, and in specific, Jasmine Manns uses growing up in Newark, New Jersey, as well as her relationship to her mother, her father, the kids that she knows in the neighborhood who may be involved in like gang violence or other things and she accurately portrays what's going on and how that has an effect on black women. And I like dog-eared so many poems in here but I will read you one. So the poem that I would like to read from Black Girl Call Home is Speak to Me of My Mother Who Was She and this is a poem that after I read it I have constantly thought about and I just think that it is beautiful and simple, but very profound and kind of alters the way you think, at least for me, it did. Speak to my mother, who was she? Tell me about the girl my mother was before she traded in all her girl to be my mother. What did she smell like? How many friends did she have before she had no room? 
before I took up so much space in her prayers, who did she pray for? And I just think that that is a beautiful reminder of who our parents were outside of their identity as being our parents. And it has stuck with me. That poem has stuck with me. And that's just one of the multitude of beautiful examples. So definitely check this out. Okay, so going along the lines of a poet or a poetry collection that I think is a great place for beginners to start. It is a master class on place and all of the things that a place can exude and the way in which poetry can capture the essence and being of a place as well as the inhabitants of said place and i want to recommend every first and 15th by dimitri reyes dimitri is a fellow youtuber and i actually received this book from him to review and it was so good it also centers on growing up in newark new jersey so there is a theme here and as i was saying this just lends to me wanting to read local poets around new jersey which is my state and I think that's a great place for beginners to start because if you're familiar with a poet and the area that they're speaking of, if they are focusing on that in the themes, then you will be able to make sense and feel grounded in the narrative or in the sensory sensations and feelings that the poet is trying to convey to you. Actually, every 1st and 15th is Dimitri Reyes's poetry collection in which he details growing up in Newark, New Jersey, as well as a Puerto Rican inhabitant. His culture means so much to him and it flies off the pages. And without further introduction, I am going to insert Dimitri Reyes reading and the poem that he'll be reading is Third Generation. Third Generation after Marina Carrera. We are grass cracked cement, dollar store chalk breaking on rough sidewalk, dust kissing our jeans when children cross streets, watching out for buses code switching between careful, the bus is turning, and cuidado, el orobos están virando. We are empanadas for breakfast and white rice for dinner. We are CNC sodas and sunflower seeds tucked into our chucks, new balances, SB dunks or retro fours, reggaeton rappers, skateboarders, ballers, and scene kids in whichever order they came first. We are the countries that are in our minds, the megapixels of palms, grass, and sand seen on the walls of barbershops and bodegas come in 4K. We are change the channel on your IO triple play. We don't know how to respond to It's Your Heritage Month because every month should be our month. Someone says, for what? Our forehead wrinkles and repeat like a bus. For what? What? Que? For what? For que? We see in 4K. We know there are more of us. Never think there are too many of us. In America, we're included if we see us in America until they don't see us in America. We are raised by our grandparents, here or not, while our parents figure it out. They are still figuring it out. We are a part of the same gene pool until a different one is uncovered. We are the equivalent of standing in the wrong line at the DMV and understanding English faster than we could forget Spanish. And that still doesn't license us our star-spangled freedom. We figure it out before them. Our last names leave us naked. We are at the friend's house with the clear enough pool and say, damn, if only we could live in this weather year round where that friend reaches across four generations to say, you wildin', I'm not on the island. I don't even like the heat. Peace and blessings, peace and poetry, and peace and love, everyone. My name is Dimitri Reyes, and what you just heard was the poem Third Generation from my first chat book, Every First and Fifteenth. I am a poet, a content creator, an educator, and a workshop facilitator, both on DimitriReyesPoet.com and my YouTube channel, Dimitri Reyes Poet. And I am from, born and raised, Newark, New Jersey. A lot of people ask me from time to time where my voice came from and what inspires me. Um, a lot of things do. Uh, love, 
uh, music, particularly hip hop and jazz and salsa and punk rock and emo music as well uh, inspire me. A, a lot of my work does talk about uh, family and growing up in the city. It's very important as artists to write what we know and that is usually our natural landscape. You know, a lot of poets of our antiquated time did a lot of pastorals, poems about areas and environments. And thinking of the 21st century in our urban environments, I think it is important to still talk about these trees and talk about these bushes, but still also talk about these structures, right? Um, bus stops and street corners and bodegas and houses become a part of that environment. And it's important to talk about those environments and talk about these stories. Such is third generation. Uh, what I hope comes across with my work and what I hope to do is not only to tell a story of one third generation Boricua person that grew up on the East Coast in the city of Newark, but also have that speak to other folks like me, both black and brown, and also to teach others as well. Uh, it's very important with our writing that there's going to be a community that we know is going to receive our writing and feel these stories and vibe with these stories. But then the folks that can't vibe with it, that don't share in that experience, could share in the experience of learning about a different experience. So in my work, I, I do hope that other people could be seen and then we can be heard. But then I hope for a bunch of other folks that they could also learn about our experiences as well. Gracias EKG for reviewing every 1st and 15th and enjoying every 1st and 15th and for having me on your lovely channel. I cannot wait to see what else you do and you are doing a great service to the community by beaming the lights on such great books. Have a great day everyone. Thank you Dimitri for lending your time and showing us a live performance as well as giving us more background of what inspired you to write every first and 15th. Another tip I have if you are a newbie for beginning poetry is to definitely watch poetry performances or interviews of the poets speaking about what inspired them. The conceptualization of a poem definitely helps as well just in order to understand it better. Up next, a poetry collection that I think is, you know, we're, we're advancing along in the degree of difficulty, but I think was super accessible still and insanely brilliant, and that is Grocery List Poems by Rihanna McGavin. Rihanna McGavin was the, the Youth Poet Laureate of Los Angeles, beyond talented. This poetry collection feels like a coming-of-age story. It follows just being a teenager, a young child, into adulthood. She also presents her culture in the story, growing up as a Jewish woman. This poetry collection was all about Los Angeles. The first poem here was about being on the beach and childhood, and it was just immediately made me crave the warmth. And a poem that I am going to read to you is a poem that I cannot get one line specifically out of my head ever since I've read it. This is on page 12 and it is called Manifesto in an Unknown Language. No, I couldn't sleep. I'm building my loves from the smell of rain and the bus driver's soft wave when I'm broke. From a sea that carves cracked bottles into gems and a stranger's laugh runs a vein of silver through the night, a love cut from the dark when a kissing scene fades on a film screen. Say the last time someone touched me with a tender feeling and I'll eat the clock. Name the next time when all the lucky pennies I've thrown away, waiting for that love like a nostatorium. The petals with their birthday candle flame, hot and sweet, the kind of love in my steps where empty rooms are only rooms you've left. And this line specifically, say the last time someone touched me with a tender feeling and I'll eat the clock. Those few lines, that sentence, I think is insane of how to elicit emotions, tactile feelings, and relate that to something that is intangible like time. Beyond brilliant, please check out Grocery List Poems. This sounds interesting to you. As you can see from that reading, the language, in my opinion, of this is very accessible. Um, it doesn't feel exclusive at all, but there is such a brilliance to McGavin's work that I think everyone should read. So definitely check this out. 
And lastly, I'm going to recommend two more poetry collections to you. The next one being one of my all-time favorite poetry collections, and that is Dreamwork by Mary Oliver. I think Mary Oliver is the perfect place to start for beginners. Mary Oliver, to me, is my poetry icon. She uses nature as a means to dissect the human condition and relate these things that we feel internally and see the patterns in the way that the natural world mimics. But Mary Oliver to me is an amazing poet because she uses very simple language to tackle these profound, deeply intricate aspects of what it means to be human. I am going to read to you a poem that you have actually might know already called Wild Geese. It's one of my favorite poems of all time. Wild Geese, you do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. And last but certainly not least, I have another Pulitzer Prize winning poet who I think is very accessible to beginners and I would recommend you read Sharon Olds and this is her collection Stag's Leap which actually won the Pulitzer Prize and I actually recently just finished reading this and when I tell you that Sharon Olds poetry is out of this world, truly interstellar, her ability to really flesh out a moment is something that I don't take for granted as an observer of life. I think Sharon Olds holds a, the microscope in such a way and is able to dissect things in such a way that although is very specific to her own experience relates to a plethora of people and Stag's Leap is about the end of her 30-year marriage. She and her husband get a divorce and he leaves her for another woman. I am going to read The Last Hour, which is also on page 13, so lucky number 13 today. Suddenly, the last hour before he took me to the airport, he stood up, bumping the table and took a step toward me. And like a figure in an early science fiction movie, he leaned forward and down and opened an arm, knocking my breast. And he tried to take some hold of me. I stood and we stumbled. And then we stood around our core, his hoarse cry of awe at the center, at the end of our life. Quickly then, the worst was over. I could comfort him, holding his heart in place from the back and smoothing it from the front, his own life continuing and what had bound him around his heart and bound him to me, now lying on and around us. Seawater, rust, light, shards, the little eternal curls of arrows beaten out straight. And another collection that she has called The Dead and the Living. She also has one called Odes. I just heard an amazing thing about Sharon Olds and hopefully that poem really did her work justice and if you're a beginner, I suggest that you start reading her work. So ultimately, that's it for this video. Those are one, two, three, four, five, six poetry collections that I recommend you start with if you are new in poetry. If you are an avid poetry reader and you have other recommendations that you think newbies, new poetry readers should read, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up if you feel so inclined and also subscribe to my channel 
and you can also follow me on instagram and i've been doing tiktok recently so you can follow me there too everything will be linked down below and yeah thank you so so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye i was like yo